Hello there, welcome to episode 2 of my tutorial series for Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead. In the last episode, we took a little bit of a sightseeing tour in the vicinity, and a couple of things have been uncovered. So, I have scouted out the region where I'm at. The rural house that we're starting today's session at is going to be the staging point, and the goal for my episode for today is to safely secure myself an area that we will declare to our current base camp. So with that being said, we are going to get right started. Since this is a Let's Play series after all, that means there will be always things that uh, will break my flow of explanations because, you know, the game does unexpected things, but I always do my best to A, get the topic of the episode through, and B, explain everything that happens in between. So I'm pressing slash now to open up the uh, advanced inventory manager. And I just met, I just noticed that I still don't have a flashlight on me. You know, a flashlight is always amazing to have. A, a light, any light source is really, really good. And pick up some of those gallon sized zipper packs as well. They are super low weight, super low um, volume and they are really, really useful later down the road. The only thing that I'm looking for right now, well, let's take that matchbook, is a fire source. There's a lots of other, there are lots of other useful things in here, but since we haven't settled down yet, I don't want to uh, stress myself out too much with that. Probably we will return to this house if we don't find any better spot, because this is an adequate starting point after all. But enough about that, for today, I want to explore the vicinity here. So we got a farm, a farmhouse, a evac shelter, and yet another evac shelter here. So these are the first points that I want to that I want to travel towards to. Here is a light industry complex. I already know that this one will be well heavily infested with zombies. Therefore, I'm not that super eager to get on over there. You know, we need to fight this uh, place clean, so to say, and therefore, with my current gear, I'm not down. So, we're going to use the auto walk function yet again to get ourselves down to that farm. Press capital W twice at the spot where you want to walk to, and then it'll happen. So, capital Z now to uh, zoom out a bit, and the farm as live animals, no zombified animals, and we've spotted the first zombies. So, as I see here, this is a typical farmhouse situation. The zombies in every location roughly resemble what you would expect in a real life situation there. So that means in a farmhouse, there's one family, tops. When it comes down to cities, well, there can be hundreds of people in there and the game takes that very, very detailed. Okay, so we already know that there's zombies at the farmhouse, so we're going to check out the environment a little bit more. You know, I'm taking a detour here to not attract these folks. Here we go. So the evac shelter here, oh my, that doesn't look too well. Doesn't this look to you as well like an evac shelter that has been never finished? So we can now press page down to go downstairs, but I highly recommend you not to. Instead, press capital X after pressing A and enabling your light source, in this case my flashlight, capital X now, page down. So now I can safely look downstairs before going downstairs. Pressing escape cancels that. Keep in mind to turn off the flashlight again. And now we can, yeah, well, this is, a under construction um, evac shelter. So this one is going to be of no use for us in this current scenario. There is a uh, big crate and when I press E right next to it, the game only tells me that I don't have a prying tool to open it. So we are going to go to that farmhouse now because you know, the other thing on my list is now only that other evac shelter, but that's really far away. And I'm quite positive that we can kill off the zombies that are guarding this place. So the first thing I do is I press D 
and I drop those makeshift slings I have on my character. Whenever I go to combat, I always try to have no backpacks on me. Um, pressing at gives you the uh, character sheet, and you have this encumbrance thing going on here. And, ah, well, uh, let, let's show you. Capital W to uh, wear these again. So, as you see here, encumbrance on the torso is now 20 plus 8. That's because we have those slings around us, and without them, we're only at a 8. So, the encumbrance is important for two things. First off, it will make you miss more often when you're attacking, and second off, it'll also make it easier for the enemy to hit you. So, it's really, really important to keep your encumbrance as low as possible when you're fighting. Okay, so let's get forward to that. And you might already have noticed the little red exclamation mark on that dude. That means he has spotted me. This guy hasn't spotted me yet. When we press capital V, we can also see here those two guys. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that guy away. It's really good to have the attention of one Z and not of the other. And the next thing we're going to do is zoom in a little bit and press X. So now I'm looking for areas that are movement cost heavy, so the farm fields are only 150. Not ideal, I'd prefer something higher. Farm field fences are completely impassable, also not too cool. We'd have those uh, tall hedges here, they would be, they're also impassable. All right, so in that scenario, I'm taking the guy even further back. And as you see here, the red exclamation mark has passed. Sometimes you lose them, it's really easy to lose a dumb zombie. Press 5 on the dumb block to wait a few turns. And uh, I'm going to go now towards here. I can already see that there's a shrub there with 400 movement points. And that's where I'm going to wait for my friend. So in the early game, I tried to fight only in such beneficial areas. So we were able to slap him twice. He's uh, now pretty much uh, done for. There we go. Press S to smash the body, and press G to check out what's uh, loot-wise on it. And we're going to pick up the lighter, so we have now a uh, fire source available. Brilliant. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing with the other Z around the house. So, let's see. Is there any way where I can fight that thing? Let's check out that boulder. Has a movement cost of 250. Not what I'm looking for. The other boulder here, 400. Perfect. That's where we want to be. Okay, so here, standing diagonally to that thing again, increases the chances. So I, I swung twice and missed twice. So third swing, I got grabbed. So as you see there, I just did that to showcase it. After two swings, it would have been wiser to go away. So now that we're grabbed, two things are true. First off, if I'd be moving away, I'd be trying to break free of the grab. If I fail, the zombie gets free attacks. Two, since I'm grabbed, my dodging is a lot more bad and the zombie has a way easier time of hitting me. It's basically like a preparation for follow-up attacks. In a situation like that, we could now either run away and try to break the, gr uh, the grip or fight. I'm going to go for a fight, and as you see here, we got our first hit into the torso already. And another one. And we're uh, we're fighting back, but as you see there, we're here much more. Worst case scenario. So I kind of like did this a bit on purpose because I wanted to showcase how dangerous it can be to take that greedy third swing or or whatever. You really got to be careful with these scenarios. So smash the uh, body, and here we have a dark blue marking on the right leg. This means we got infected. Press A, and we're using the antiseptic on the leg. And as soon as the blue colored tint is gone, the infection is gone too. And that's why you should never fight zombies without medicine, you know? It's just like that. Okay, so let's check out the rest of the farmhouse. I'm examining the car with E, and uh, well, when we go for this screen, I see here the engine is faulty. So there is a certain chance that this uh, won't be, well, okay, most likely they never st start when they're faulty. But what's so more importantly bad, the car battery is draining it at 0%. So this is pretty much a car that we won't ever be able to drive. 
but this car has a spare wood axe on it. Wouldn't you think? So we're going to pick that thing up and drop it here on the ground. Special items like these, I personally like to drop them somewhere else so I can find them. Okay, so let's open up the door and uh, just like I said, maximum fa to a family tops and there's the zombie child. So I'm going to take a step forward. The chairs here have a movement cost of 150. So I, ga I go for one swing, but then I run away again. Just that one swing, not more than that. And uh, here we can now use the car strategy. The car strategy is a quite simple one. Every bit of, um, of movable terrain on a car has a move cost of 400. And uh, what we're doing here is we're leading the zombie now through the car where he has a 400 move cost. So I'm stepping away after two swings because we're not going to repeat the mistake from the last time. Two swings and then step it away. When you got no armor, it is really important that you keep it like that. Two swings and going away. My character currently is really bad at fighting. I guess you have already noticed that. But also it is worth mentioning that zombie kids are exceptionally good at dodging. So uh, it's twice the pain. And here comes a tough zombie. Tough zombies are in the hierarchy of uh, basic zombies, the most dangerous dudes. They are faster than your average zombie and uh, stronger than your average zombie. But uh, if we lure them in like that, they aren't that much of a big deal. But uh, on the open field, they are really dangerous. So here we go. Here I took now the greedy third swing because I already hit him twice and I was very confident that I'd be taking him down with the next one. I'll leave it up to you how you take your danger assessment there. I just noticed that I found a multi-tool here. Pressing E when you're hovering any item gives you the uh, complete readout. The multi-tool is interesting and so far it's small and has a lot of qualities. You can butcher with it, cut with it, metal saw, wood saw, screw driving. It has a lot of qualities, but every one of them is quite low. Anyways, I love picking up these when I find one. So let's go on over the rest of that house. So we're going to check out the bathroom yet again. Let's see, we found a box of alcohol wipes. These are pretty okay. But we didn't find anything uh, in regards of antiseptics. Too bad. In the clothing department, we're still looking for backpacks and the like. A pair of leather gloves would be also quite nice. Armor-wise, leather belt. So, if your character isn't rocking a belt when you're starting the game, it totally is worth pilfering the first belt that you get. So capital W to pick it up because the belt is kind of a container and in ca and, uh, Cataclysm you always have to have containers to put stuff into. No container, no ability to put the stuff into. You get the idea. So here we have another bedroom. I'm uh, checking out the drawers yet, yet again just to make sure that we don't miss any pieces of clothing. But obviously there doesn't seem to be anything and most importantly as well this house doesn't have a second uh, second story sadly but apart from that this is already a very 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 good location for a base I say that because we got a pool of water and a pool of water is a basically infinite source of water we even got a water pump in terms of crafting recipes, when you're in the vicinity of a pool of water, you're not able to, to to deplete that with your crafting recipes. We also got some seeds here for various nice plants. So this is a good spot for a base, except for the fact that it doesn't have an upper story. The upper stories are interesting in so far, as the game is a little bit weird. When you are one stair, when you are one level above the rest of the world. The zombies don't interact with your height level anymore properly, just to put it into simple terms. So we're going to explore the rest of the farm and hopefully don't run into any further fights. I just want to showcase here, this is the damage that we took, but most importantly our speed dropped from 100 to 89, so we are now 11% slower than we were before. Pain in this game slows you down. 
and the more severe this grows, the more you're uh, in danger. So, in a nutshell, in Cataclysm, when you're getting banged up, always keep an eye out on your speed. This might be your demise otherwise. So, silos. We're going to crawl up on these because this is the same logic that we already had with the radio tower. When you get on up to a high vantage point, you have a nice look. And since we are carrying around binoculars, I'm even able to check out more of that. So here we have yet another city available, but it has a collapsed tower. It's a little bit uh, frightening. It also has a fungal flowers building. That's uh, another enemy faction that we haven't encountered yet. So yeah, good times. Good times in Edinburgh. So probably we don't want to go on over there. So I'm going to go and climb the other silo here as well, because that gave me surely a little bit of a longer view. So up here is a motel. Motels, by the way, are an amazing area for bases as well, because they often come with a uh, second story. Here we have a farming area, and actually we got sheep here that are still alive. It's pretty, pretty dope. We could breed them if we'd want to. But uh, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to use the auto walk to get on over to the next evac shelter. So Black Rat has been spotted. We're canceling the auto move. I want to check out where it is. So Black Rats on our own are not really that dangerous. They are not going to they are not going to attack you on their own volition, but uh, you should also not get too close to them because they might act out uh, weird on you if you are wounded or anything like that. So, pressing X to examine this. So I already see graffiti. I see shattered windows. So it's pretty clear that this evac shelter has been uh, has fallen already. The only question now is. Is it brimming with zombies or is it uh, not? So we're going to get on close here, smash the window here, and check out the interior. Here's a canvas sack lying around, cough syrup, metal wreckage. So it doesn't seem like there's too much loot left here. Aluminum can. So there's one downstairs here. I'm pressing S to smash open the door uh, here, because, you know, it is already half smashed. We're finding some resources here in the in the locker, and here's the same thing. I'm using my flashlight, at the X, peek downstairs. This is one behavior that I strongly recommend you to cultivate, because, seriously, basements can be really, really just death traps if you don't... Uh, you're not careful. Okay, so this here looks like a total um, failure. So we're going to go once more here upstairs. And check out the roof of that thing. There's a pipe on the ceiling, but apart from that, there's only one thing worth here, and that's the evac shelter computer. So you're, if you press contact us, you get a note about where on the world the uh, evac shelter is at. A few missions reach refugee center. So uh, you get the coordinates for that thing out of that computer. So we now know where the refugee center is at. It's up to you if you want to go that way. It's one of the possible ways to play the game to get on over to the eva uh, to the uh, big um, shelter and uh, get yourself through there. It's up to you. So here you see distance to active mission. You get now, we get a, uh, yeah, ah, here is the question mark. I was looking for that. So this would be the direction that we'd need, that we'd need to take to reach the refugee camp. So you can use that as a sort of a objective if you need one. Cataclysm is a game which really, really invites you to put up your own objectives. You know, just want to say. Okay, so with all these things uh, scouted out, we have now options. We could now settle down here at the farmhouse. We could settle down at the uh, ruined evac shelter. 
not keen on that, but I wanted to note that because this thing is still actually a uh, shelter. We could also go for the motel. I highly recommend you to case, stay away from everything which has the name military in it, and, unless you're heavily equipped. And uh, yeah, so we're we're going to have a look see towards that uh, motel because I want to plunder as much as possible. But I actually have already made my decision. All right, look at that, random fissure of flame, hot air, lava. Okay, sometimes weird things just uh, spawn in the world and, uh, you know, don't take them too serious. So, here we got a first zombie ahead of us. We're doing the... Oh, I, I totally forgot that I have dropped my makeshift slings. Alright, whatever. They are in the vicinity where I want to have them, and therefore I'm okay with it. So that zombie here, by the way, is not after us in the first place. Those giant aphids here... They can totally um, bind the attention of zombies quite well. Utilizing the... Uh, whoa, all right. So, I'm in pain here. I'm in horrible pain because I, uh, were, I've been too close to the lava. So, you saw those readouts? React to these. We weren't really um, in danger yet, but uh, if I'd be... If I'd been staying near to that, it would have been a problem. Here, so typical shrub situation. Zombie was smart and stepped over to the uh, diagonal square and immediately grabbed me. Or I was like, pretty smart move. So that's the thing, you're never truly safe in any fight. That's uh, why I emphasize it so much that you never should go fighting, at least without antiseptics, because you never know how things will go. So, here's one uh, one motel complex. Also a very, very sweet spot to uh, settle down your character at, because a motel offers a lot of rooms, a lot of furniture that you won't miss, and most of the time, here we are that lucky, and also comes with a pool. So, we have again a uh, source of water. Water is amazing. A water source in your crafting vicinity is one of the one of the good reasons to keep a spot. So, first engagement with multiple attackers. So we're going to try and keep those guys as separated as possible. Whenever there's more than one zombie standing right next to you, you should immediately retreat. Like, oh, we got grabbed again. I broke that grab. Like, when there's more than one zombie next to you, both zombies can grab you. And yes, the debuffs from being grabbed, they stack up. Basically, every zombie grabbing you is making the situation worse. Therefore, try to be only adjacent to one zombie at a time, and plan your movement accordingly to have this always as your main objective when you're fighting. Try to stay away from these guys and never get surrounded. Oh, a bandage. Wonderful. Real bandages are also very, very valuable. While we can craft bandages ourselves, those uh, ready-made bandages of high quality, they're what we're looking for. So, here we're using the uh, wall of uh, shrubs. It's pretty cool. It's not as powerful as a uh, strong... Um, of uh, shrubs here but it's also 250 sometimes you gotta use what you gotta use so here since this is a slower um, this is a weaker uh, movement impediment I'm using it and uh, kite more and I kite more often so here is one baddie the zombie runner I hate zombie runners zombie runners are basically like tough zombies just smarter Okay, we take we took them down. Um, zombie runners are faster than tough zombies, weaker than tough zombies, but more intelligent than tough zombies. They instantly or they innately avoid any um, traps that you want to uh, set up for them with the terrain like I'm doing here. And basically only because I was standing like here, the runner zombie was, uh, was taking this into account. The AI of the zombies isn't horribly bad. The AI of the zombies even gets way better the faster they become. 
That's one thing you really got to take uh, keep in mind. The faster the enemy, the more intelligent their pathing will become. So, looks like we got that uh, that uh, motel. So I'm smashing that window because I see a lovely, lovely day pack. So the day pack is not that much of a huge backpack. It only has a volume, a low volume, but uh, the most important thing, you know, remember those slings that we crafted? They're, uh, they're okay, but they're also very clunky and uh, un unwieldy. And here we have, we have the jackpot, the duffel bag. So a duffel bag is extremely encumbering when you wear it, but it is also a, uh, a piece of backpack which holds a lot of gear. So we're uh, going to check this out. Oh boy, it's a motorcycle helmet. Motorcycle helmets are cool, so we wear that immediately. Capital W and put it on. The thing is, I had nothing on my head slot so far, and a motorcycle helmet, I'll show you, has insanely high values for bash, cut, and ballistic protection. It even protects a little bit from acidic damage, which is uh, quite amazing. So this is a lucky motel. Often motels come with almost no loot whatsoever. So I heard noises, and I kind of like expect that that uh, tough zombie to show up here. So this is a pretty crappy situation. We're slowed down. And uh, therefore, I'm already taking any action that I can to get some distance between me and the dude. I do see one thing that's good for us, though. There's cars. So let's check this car out. Faulty engine. Well, I don't want to fight in here because this might be actually one running car. Diesel engine with... Okay, I don't want to fight here either. So, the thing is, I don't want these uh, cars to be demolished by the zombies, so I'm not uh, using them as a fighting ground. But we're uh, we're going to fight it here. That's a good spot. This is as good as it gets. So, I'm uh, wrapped now. So, I'm taking this guy down. Alright, my dude is at severe pain. This is uh, typically the point where I'd call it day, fighting-wise. And... Uh, that's also what we're doing here. So, since the environment here is rather dangerous, we're going to pick up our items, our containers, and we're starting to loot whatever we can. I'm picking up the sheets and the strings, and uh, yeah, well, I'm also bringing the sticks. I'm only bringing one stick. Okay, sticks are really, really unwieldy, but they are also a really good source of firewood. So, we got all these items, so... Let's check out if any of these cars is actually drivable. This one is looking good. The only downside is it is a diesel car. But I'm not going to go for um, vehicles today in this episode, so we're going to walk back to that place. I don't want to open the can of vehicles uh, in the last few seconds of this, uh, or last few minutes of this tutorial episode. So, we've got ourselves... Uh, some settled in here i I'd, I'd say this is going to be where we're uh, building up our, our base camp for starters because this is a pretty good spot we're very close to water we got a sleeping room here we got um a hedge here we got farm fields here yeah this is uh this is for me as good as it, good as it gets so the first thing that i'll do here is i'm going to set up shop here by dropping the items that I don't need here on the ground. So, my character is really wounded, so we need to bandage ourselves. Step one, we're going to disassemble something here. The, uh, this is the uh, hotkey for disassembling items. And we're going to disassemble those sheets into patchwork cotton sheets. So, um, there we go. Now we got 12 of these. And now we disassemble more of them until we have a nice amount of cotton patches. Cotton patches are, are what we're going to transform next into bandages. So get into the crafting menu, press F to search, and search for bandages. So we're going to make us now makeshift bandages. As you see here, these can be made out of... Oh, patchwork cotton sheet. My bad. We didn't need to disassemble them. Turn... Dial back on, on this. A... 
Disassembling a sheet gives you the patchwork cotton sheets you require for that. I'm sorry, I sometimes get mixed up with the uh, recipes, but you surely will understand. So, makeshift bandages. Press B for batch production, and we're uh, building, uh, we're producing all of these. So, here we go. So, oh yeah, my character messed up the process. And uh, he destroyed uh, materials, so we have to disassemble more of these uh, sheets. Press A again, and then uh, reactivate the in-progress makeshift bandages. Here we go. So, in case that ever happens. The other thing that, we, that I really want to do here, but, well, it's, we're going to go for that in the next episode. I made me some bandages. We're going to slap these on our body. Because, you know, it's better than nothing, but uh, it's only slightly better than nothing. So, that's the end for today's episode. We have explored the place. I think I have uh, introduced enough of the scouting basics and all these things here. So, a good starter base should have access to water, a safe sleeping room, and access to all manner of different resources and most importantly it shouldn't be in the vicinity of enemies i'm going to summarize that at the beginning of the next episode but this place here i didn't take that because it's surrounded by woods and swamp so i'm afraid of monsters attacking me okay but enough about that for this episode thanks for watching everybody drop me your comments down below leave me a thumbs up on that video if you enjoyed and consider subscribing i'd be delighted if you did so there's also playlist links down there leading to the other series that i made or to the episode zero of the series or the playlist of the series whatever you might want to check out i'd be delighted if you did so that being said see you guys next time and have a good one